My name is Lee Nichols, and I'm the editor and associate publisher of Hydrocarbon Processing Magazine. I'd like to welcome all of you today to Hydrocarbon Processing's Refined View. So in this segment, we like to sit down with an author of a recent hydrocarbon processing article, and then discuss the article's topic, as well as dive down into the technologies that are affecting the downstream processing industry. So joining me today is Dr. Paige Morse, who's the chemicals industry lead for Aspen Tech. Dr. Morse's article, which is entitled, Digitalization is the Next Step in Chemicals Excellence, was featured in the January 2019 issue of Hydrocarbon Processing Magazine. Now the article is up on the Hydrocarbon Processing site. It is open access, so anyone can access it. And you will also receive a link to the article um, to view it at any time that you'd like. So first off, welcome Dr. Morse. How are you today? Doing fine, thank you. Excellent. Now, before we dive down into your article, can you give the viewers a little bit more information on what Aspen Tech does in the processing industry? Aspen Technology is a software provider, and we give tools and solutions to companies, primarily in energy and chemical businesses, to help their operations. So it can be how to improve upstream aspects, like, and I mean upstream in the processes like R&D, for example, how they design their asset, how they run their asset, and then how they maintain it. So it's a software solution across the lifetime of your asset. So let's go ahead and dive deep into the article. So you wrote the following. Digital technologies offer significant opportunity for improved quality and cost savings across the chemicals industry by enabling more efficient design, operation, and maintenance of assets throughout their life cycle. So when I read this, I basically thought that this was a perfect summary of what the article was about. So let's just start there. Can you, one, provide a brief summary of what the article was about, and then, of course, what you meant by the statement I just read? Okay. Yeah, and I agree with you. It is a quick summary of the article. I think the main thing that Aspen thinks about is how to look at the entire asset life cycle. So that's the critical piece here. And so if you look at the entire asset life cycle, that's how you get to full operational excellence, and that's our view. And that was the, the, po the point of the article and what I focused on. And so there's three aspects of the asset life cycle that we focus on. And initially, it's the design of the asset, and it's really the design of the process as well. So it, for example, can start with R&D, how you do design, use simulations to help you in your R&D, but then also use it to design your asset. Then the next part is operations. How can you most efficiently run that asset that you spent a lot of money on and you want to be sure it runs well? So how do you do the operations, and that's an awesome called advanced process control, you really control the asset as well as any of the planning that goes into it. How do you make sure everything's ready to be sure the asset runs well, both at the input side, feedstock, and the output side, where's the product headed? So that's a critical aspect of operations. And then the third part of that is the maintenance side. Now this is the newest part for Aspen, newest part of our portfolio, and it's in a suite that we call asset performance management. And there we're focused on how do you ensure that you maintain the best operations as long as you can. And that may be, thinking about when do you do maintenance. It could also be thinking about how do you operate so that your equipment is well taken care of. And it's also looking at the data you've been collecting and thinking about how do I best maintain the quality of what I've been making in that asset. So that's the key areas, and we call that the uh, looking at the entire asset life cycle. Okay, perfect. And we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into that because that's something I know we wanna get into, especially with, with things on sustainability. So. The next part I want to focus on is you cite that the European Petrochemical Association's 2018 chemical survey showed that 73% of petrochemical companies rated themselves as lagging behind in supply chain digitalization. So the biggest question I, I found here is why do you think that is? Yeah, well I think it's interesting. I mean that EPA study was actually interesting on both sides. One aspect is the company said they're lagging quite a bit but their customers said they're lagging even more. So that was an interesting situation. Wow. Right. So I think part of it is, first off, the chemicals business is relatively conservative in its approach. It's cautious about how it thinks about new tools, wanting to be sure that those assets that they spend often hundreds of millions on run really well, safely. They've got several aspects they're considering. So they're going to be conservative in their adoption. Quite different than, say, a financial services business or even retail, because those have been companies that are very fast. So th they're being cautious, and I think that is the right approach, as I say, considering the investment that they've done in the assets. Okay. 
Now, of course, that leads into my next question, which is one of the, uh, I guess, most important questions that I hear, of course, at different com uh, uh, conferences, events, and things like that. And so if you're a company that's, start, that's now getting into the whole digital transformation, incorporating more digital tools, where do you start? Yeah, where do you start? And that's often a difficult question. Yeah, the and, million dollar question. Yeah, exactly. And because the, the issue has been often for digital projects in the past, they may have been isolated. So maybe you chose one production unit you wanted to focus on, or one critical quality issue that you were concerned about, but you haven't thought about it across your enterprise. And so now people are trying to think, okay, well, what do I do with digital? Typically the first question is, what's my biggest business problem? So I'll tell you, just recently with customer discussions, they came up with, okay, this is what's killing me right now. And it could be, for example, say you're an olefins producer and you're running a steam cracker, and these days you're thinking, how can I be maximize feedstock flexibility? So I, maybe I've got a very flexible cracker, and so I've got the mix of feedstock prices going in and products out. How do I best plan for that to maximize my profitability? So that may be the olefins guy. But a polymers guy, considering all the new assets that are coming up now around the world, polymers guy may be thinking, I want to maximize my throughput. So what order should I make all the, all the products? Well, there's great digital tools to help you line that up so you make it as efficiently as possible. You have less waste in between, typically called transition grades. And also think about well, how do I con you know, um, conserve energy through the process as well. So it depends on where you are in the business as to what your critical issue is. Just want to mention one thing though, a lot of companies have decided that maybe analytics is the first thing I should do. This has been kind of a hot thing in the industry recently. Part of the reason for that is chemical companies for years have been collecting a lot of data, right? They've got d different measuring devices throughout their processes. So they've got all this data and think, what can I do with this? Well, analytics tool is taking all that data and seeing what you can learn from it. Mm -hmm. And so that kind of makes sense. So a lot of companies said, I'm going to just do that because I know I've already got the data. And that works quite well, actually. And what can happen is you do this analysis and you look at how certain performance behavior and changes in your process have impacted things downstream, and you can learn a lot from that. But just caution one big challenge, because there's a lot of analytics tools out right now. What's really important is you appreciate the working environment that you're in. And what I mean by that is take a lot of data and you crunch it and you can kind of make up a story from it. But unless you have domain expertise, an understanding of what the process is, what the technologies are that are involved, you have trouble really interpreting what those different algorithms are telling you. And this is where I'll just say Aspen's experience here is really important because you want to be sure you understand it, you can put it in context of the industry. And that's definitely something that we're doing with our asset performance management tools. Excellent. And that is a great segue to my next question, which is, so how can Aspen Tech Assure companies around the world that digital makes sense, the big word, uh, makes sense makes to sense. enhance or optimize their plant operations. Yeah, well, the good news is, I mean, Aspen's been in this business a long time. So the company's been around nearly 40 years. We have loads of case studies and examples across chemicals and energy businesses and with engineering um, procurement and construction companies as well. And we work with all of them, and we've got great case studies. Because often that's what you want to hear is that someone like you has run into this problem before and figured out a way to solve it. And every asset's a little different, so we have to work on that. But to know that some other polypropylene producer tried this before, or there's a cracker somewhere else in the world that did this, or a refinery, you can really learn from that. And that's really important, I think, to help with some of the conservative views in the industry to know that someone else tried it and it worked. And another thing that we do to help with all of this as well is we encourage users to learn from each other. Right, right. So we have this uh, conference that we basically a platform that we provide to help users learn from each other. We call it Optimize. And we do these meetings around the world and we pull users together. And in fact, our next meeting, our Optimize 2019 meeting, is next month here in Houston where we will uh, get users to talk to each other about what's going on. We're expecting more than a thousand people. We'll have more than 200 papers on a variety of topics to encourage users to share what they've learned, best practices, maybe an industry solution that's specific to energy or chemicals business or EPC. And this is where users really learn from each other and gain confidence in using these tools. Excellent. So that kind of goes into my next question here is, so many companies in the hydrocarbon processing industry have now appointed a chief digital officer. 
something I haven't ever really seen before. Um, so, what my question is, what do you think that means for the adoption of more digital technologies in the hydrocarbon processing industry? Yeah. Well, I do think it's a significant step. Um, in my view, making it an executive level role really points out the importance of it. Because digital right now is strategic. It's not an isolated solution like it was in the before, like one unit or one process. Now it's across the enterprise. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that effectively, you often need the authority and focus that comes with making it a senior role and putting in the executive suite. And that's what's happening, because companies are now working across the entire enterprise, thinking all the way from R&D stages to delivery to the customer, and then the maintenance cycles in between. And to do that effectively, we find that companies that really succeed at this make this a significant focus, and putting it at the CXO level is really important to do that. Excellent. And that kind of goes into my next question, which is it's just it become a very, very big topic in our industry, and of course that's sustainability. Mm -hmm. So my, my final question is, how is Aspen Tech providing chemical companies a path to increase digital technologies to address sustainability? Sustainability, yeah. And sustainability, of course, is a critical topic in this industry. I think we've always been focused on health, safety, environment. It's very important. I think sustainability gives us a new focus, though, and in fact, new metrics to look at. Because digital tools in the past, for the most part, the success has been measured by financial numbers. Of course that's important. These are companies, they need to be profitable. But what we're doing now in sustainability is giving a different metric to think about. So a dashboard that in the past may have just considered, for example, millions of dollars or euro, euros in terms of profitability, now wants to think about, what about emissions? What about energy usage? Uh, what about water use? This is now emerging as something to also track. And as I say, in the past, digital tools have already helped with these. Often the projects are driven by the fact that we want to reduce energy usage. We show success in dollars, but now we may think about BTUs that we've saved. And of course, related to that is CO2 emissions that go with the use of the energy as well. So lots of interest in this topic. I think we're very well positioned to address it because already we've been looking at those things. And now we'll just provide those direct metrics as well as the customers are definitely requesting mm -hmm. these days. Excellent, excellent. Yeah, it's a perfect point. Well, with that, I, I really want to thank you for your time. It's been great to go over this mm -hmm. this uh, article that, that you that you wrote and then, of course, where the industry is going when it comes to additional digital technologies in the industry. So uh, one of the biggest areas that you mentioned is, of course, collaboration with other people in the industry. Yeah. So one area I want to go back to is optimize. So can you provide the viewers, um, of course, the dates on when those will be? Because if they're interested, definitely um, to check it out. And of course, where they can go to learn more about Optimize and what Aspen yeah. Tech does. Optimize is really a critical platform for our users, we find, and new people as well. So our Optimize that's coming now is in May in Houston. It's the 13th through the 16th. Okay. And it is across our industries. Now, primarily, that's energy and chemicals, but we all work across industries. And it's where users come and tell their stories. And they, we talk about best practices. We talk about applications specific to industry. And we also have executive level discussions about how you do this strategically. Really important to do. And this is, the, as I say, the next one we had one just a few months ago in China, because this is important around the world. Right. And one thing that's important as well, at the Optimize, we will have international participation because this is going on worldwide and we can learn from each other in all regions. Excellent. Yeah, I've been to it before. It's, it's a fantastic platform um, mm -hmm. for collaboration, learning more about how Aspen Tech can work with customers, but just problems within the industry itself and how your company has solved it, how other companies have solved those problems. So it's a fantastic platform and I, I suggest anyone who's watching this definitely go check it out and definitely check out Aspen Tech. Uh, and to see those solutions that they can provide your company. Um, with that, thank you again for your time, and thank all of you for viewing this, and we hope to talk to you soon.